And the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. <coughs> I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven and beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. Please turn to the person sitting next to you and say to them, come as you are. Come as you are. Turn around and find somebody else and say to them, come as you are. Come as you are. Amen. I remember the first time I heard that uh, I was a teenager, and I heard it from a Jesuit priest. And needless to say, I was scandalized when I heard it. This was just after I had received what is often called the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I was on fire like a zealot, uh, on fire with the Spirit. And then I go to church, and the Jesuit priest says to us, come as you are. And I thought to myself, well, what's the point then? What's the point of being here if you're not called here to change? In fact, he had the whole church singing this anthem, this, this song that he came up with in our language. It went like, Mumbu, um, translated, right, in English. Just take me as I am. Just take me as I am. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, you died for me. Just take me as I am. And the whole church was singing and swaying. And I'm thinking, this is a scandal to the church. What about the message of conversion? What about turning from our sins? And I just was, I was not happy with him. Um, but he, then he went on and he spoke about what holiness is. Uh, a position that later in life I have taken about what makes, let's say, the, the nation of Israel, what makes it holy? The nation of Israel is holy not because in that nation we don't have people who sometimes do bad things. They are holy because of the way they understand themselves. They understand themselves as being called and chosen by God. So a holy person is one who views themselves as called and chosen by God, regardless of what is happening day to day. They understand themselves. Their point of departure is that they are a called and a chosen person or a called and a chosen people. This very scandalous priest went on and he was preaching about um, Coming just as we are. What does that mean to come as we are? We, we have mentioned this in the past that um, to come as we are means that we have the humility to accept the 80% of me that is good and the courage to accept the 20% of me that is shady. Because all of us, we're not all good, there's some shadiness all around. I know it's more than 20, right? <laughs> But that is a holy person, one who has the courage to look at the, 
their whole life and say, you know what, this 80% this of me that is great, this is part of my sacred biography. But also, this 20% of me that needs work, this also is part of my sacred biography. So one day, I had uh, the courage to approach uh, Father, and I said to him, oh, Father, I just don't agree with that position. Now, just a side note, uh, this time I was in the minor seminary, and um, in the minor seminary, it's a boarding school, we all get nicknames. My nickname was Saint, because I was holy. And the guys, the, the students were like, oh, that's Saint Robert. So I was in the church praying all the time. And I had these terrible headaches. Uh, anyway, I, I, uh, I went to Father and I said, uh, Father, I just, I just don't agree with this, this approach that you are teaching the church. Uh, but, and he knew about my, uh, my headaches. So he says, Brother Robert, you have terrible headaches, don't you? I say, yes, I do. But that has nothing to do with the matter that we are talking about. He says, oh, it has everything to do with it. I say, why? He says, well, your, your halo is too tight. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, oh. What an insult. He says, my hello was too tight. He says, come down or loosen that hello a little bit. Maybe you're going to lose the headaches. The humble person is one who is always in touch with the ground. One who doesn't lose touch with humanity. In fact, humble and human all come from the same word humus, which means earth. In the Hebrew, there's a play on words between the first man created named Adam and from where he was created, Adama. Adama, the earth, Adam, the first man. To be a humble person is to always have our feet on the ground, to always recognize that each one of us is on a journey. And because we are on a journey, we, we mature at a different pace. We do not fully understand where the other person is coming from or what the other person is struggling with. And so part of the journey is giving each other grace to grow. The readings that we hear today remind us of this great gift of humility. And somehow, when Father said, my hello was too tight, it was a reminder to me, like a smack in the face saying, get, I love the American expression, get off your high horse. <laughs> I, I love that. Get off your high horse. You cannot stand there and judge others. You can stand there and pass uh, judgments on others and on their journey. You as well have your own struggle. So today, as we reflect on this great gift of humility, I need to ask, what keeps you humble? What is that sometimes smack in the face that reminds you and I of the gift of humility to be humble? Sometimes it is people in our lives who enter into our lives and they remind us, they speak to us about humility. I'm always reminded of uh, the first president of South, uh, the first democratically elected president of South Africa, a man by the name of Nelson Mandela. A strong man, a powerful man, and yet a humble man. You would never hear from his words, I did this and I did this. It was always we. we the, and his fight against apartheid was a village fight. When he was inaugurated as president, he invited to the, to the party people who were his jailers. And he says to them, you have helped me become a humble person. The other person that I uh, often think of when I, who reminds me of what humility is, is Kelly Holland. She's not here today. But Kelly has this wonderful saying that I have repeated over and over again. And whenever she says it, she reminds me to be humble. Her favorite saying is, there but by the grace of God goes, go I. I love that. Because that speaks of somebody who knows that whatever they are, whatever they have, everything is gift. 
It is gift for me to stand here with you. It is gift to be born in Zambia. It is gift to be born as Elenje, my tribe. Everything that I have and everything that you have is utter and pure gift. And whenever we say those wonderful, beautiful words, but by the grace of God, there goes I, we are reminding ourselves that everything that we are is gift. The humble person does not forget that. So as we gather around the altar of God and reflect on this great gift of humility, maybe we can reflect on our own journeys. What reminds us of that? My own favorite passage or thing that reminds me of humility comes usually in the Lenten season. When we approach to receive the ashes, we approach the priest and the priest says, remember, you are dust and to dust you shall return. That always for me is one of the calls that also oftentimes reminds me to to be humble before God, to know that the way to God's heart is through this virtue of humility. Today's gospel passage I find fascinating for this reason. How many here identify with the Pharisee? One person, two people, perfect. Uh, how many identify with the tax collector? One per more people identify with the tax collector, great. Um, uh, to, those, um, to those of you who identify with the Pharisee, welcome home. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I was reading this and I, I've, I've always wanted to identify with the tax collector. Not the Pharisee who goes into church and says, thank goodness I'm not like the rest of humanity. But also, it reminds me of why we gather here. We gather in this space Sunday after Sunday. At least I, I come to church for this reason. Because I come to church to sharpen the ability to catch myself. Amen? I come to church to sharpen the ability to catch myself. That when I'm doing something, I can stop myself in my tracks and say, Ah, maybe that is not so Christian. So how do I then identify with uh, the Pharisee? My mother has seven children, and most of the time she lives in Zambia. It really boils my blood. Like I get so mad with my brothers and sisters because if anything happens back home, they are very quick to get on WhatsApp or on the phone and call me about it. Now, what am I going to do about it? I am in the United States of America. I'm like, deal with it over there. Sometimes I get so mad and I say, thank God mama has me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> but then I open the scriptures and then I read what it says here. The Pharisee goes into, into church and says, thank goodness I'm not like the rest of them. These words are not foreign words, they are words that have been uttered in some way by myself. Amen? And the beauty of this space is that we can come into this space and say, you know, maybe it's not, uh, it's, this is the drama of big families. Maybe it's at work, that you, you are at work and you're working so hard and the others are not pulling their weight. Eh? And you say, gosh, I just wish everybody was like me. Today's scripture passages invite us maybe to concentrate only on the good that we do and not always to look over the shoulder and say, how is so-and-so doing? It happens sometimes in my own life at Christmas time. I always want to look over the shoulder and say, am I, am I the one who has given the best gift to mama? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is I don't know what is going on truly in the lives of my brothers and sisters. I may think I know, but I don't. I don't know of their struggles. 
Today, as we reflect on this scripture passage, I'm reminded of this beautiful truth. Just be thankful to God you have been given the ability to do what you can do. As the scripture has said to us oftentimes, do not let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Sometimes the way to happiness is not on poking our noses in what everybody else is doing. Just do you. The scriptures is telling me, just do you. Be thankful. Be grateful. And the, the virtue of humility invites me not to complain, but to be thankful to God. I am in the United States of America. Amen. To be thankful to God, we have a wonderful congregation like this. To be thankful to God for all the things that God has bestowed in my life. It is because of these things that maybe God invites me to be one who supports mama every once in a while. I once heard this story, and it was always preached, told to us on this 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, PSC. I never understood it. I don't understand it now, but I tell the story nonetheless. Again, by a Jesuit priest. Those Jesuits, oh. He told this very short story. He said, he once knew a prostitute who every night before she, walked, she goes to work, she would pray, Lord, help me get out of this job. And he left it there. To this day, I wonder, what's the point of that story? I once knew a prostitute who every day before she went to work, she prayed to God, Lord, help me get out of this work. From a distance, we can judge that person. We don't know their struggle. 